Ever since I can remember, girls always had nice clothes, really nice clothes. Boys did not. I was a boy and mine were worse, in fact they were horrible. The reason being was that my mother beached and starched everything I owned, and I hated it. From corduroy pants, jeans to flannel shirts, all starched, stiff, and horrible to wear. My father demanded stiff shirts especially the white ones and I remember a man delivering gallon bottles of beach and starch as I grew up. I hated my clothes, and my Sunday clothes were the worst. Somehow ever stiffer shirts and the collars were too big or too small, yet had to be buttoned regardless, to shoes that were hand-me-downs that were too tight or so big they fell off my feet as I walked. I don't think she starched my socks or underwear, but sometimes it felt like she did. Most of my clothes were hand-me-downs from my late brother, some relative or the neighbors. They didn't fit very well and mom ready didn't care and always lectured me on being thankful to even have clothes. I hated getting dressed up for anything because that meant a very stiff shirt, a tie and pants that were not only starched but too big on me and I had to tighten the belt all the way and were still too loose. Add to that that my mother rolled the pants up as they were always too long and if the cuff came down and if I dragged the pants leg, another spanking was due. I was short for my age to begin with and most of the hand-me-downs were just too big. Shirts I wore were sometimes so big that the shirt pocket was under my pants belt. Everything was uncomfortable to wear and sometimes my mother starched my underwear, I sometimes think on purpose, but she always said, by mistake, and they really hurt when she did. And when not dressed up, my jeans were so stiff that I could stand them up by themselves. But if I ever complained, a good smack across my face followed. The one pair of shoes that fit fairly well were so worn that my mother kept putting cardboard in them to cover up the holes. Understand, we were not poor. My father had a good job, it was just that money spent on me was wasted. You may grow out of them too fast, or you never take care of your clothes so why buy any for you? Or you don't like your clothes so why get more, was all I heard from my mother. It was in kindergarten that I remember being in a school play once celebrating some explorer and we had to be dressed up. That meant more super uncomfortable clothes to wear, and I didn't want to be in the play, but the whole class was so I had no choice in the matter, but to wear a starched flannel shirt that hurt my neck, and pants that were rolled up, was horrible, not that I had much of a choice in anything at that age. So, I did my part, in pain and uncomfortable when in one part we danced around in partners, and I accidentally brushed a girl's dress. She didn't notice but I noticed how soft it felt and how it moved so freely about her, not binding or tight but very free-flowing. I watched her dance around and she seemed so free and comfortable that I never forgot that her clothes moved with her every move and afterwards I got in trouble for purposely touching the dress of a girl just to feel the softness again. It seemed that all the girls wore comfortable clothes all the time. I tried to touch them a lot I guess, and it always ended by being talked to by the teacher. Yet while the talk was going on, I just kept looking at the girl who complained as I noticed her socks and shoes, as well as her dress. Everything always looked so light and airy, and fit her, unlike mine. The lecture went on and I promised and promised but my mind was really on her dress. I could not help but dream about it. That started a curiosity about girls' clothes that I could not stop. They all looked so soft and nice and then I started to take notice of how pretty they were as well. They all just looked so comfortable to wear. In the winter we all hung out coats up in a big, long closet in our classroom. I noticed that many girls had fur collars on their coats, some had fur cuffs on their sleeves as well. My curiosity got the best of me and each time I hung up or got my coat, I could not help but reach for a girl's coat only to feel the softness. The fur felt nice to touch and to pet. In one coat I once found some gloves and while I did not try them on, they had fur ends. Now super curious I looked in another and found a fur cap or a knitted cap. They felt wonderful. I just had to know more and why their clothes were always so nice to feel. The curiosity of a six-year-old boy can get him in a lot of trouble. Many times, grown-ups thought I was stealing some girl's pocket money, boots or gloves or even their hats, but I just wanted to feel the clothes, rub my hand on them, nothing more. But in time talks from my teacher led to my mother being called to school. And that was never good. 
After listening to my teacher tell my mother that it was most likely curiosity, we left the school in a huff and took the bus home. My mother didn't say a word and while I hoped my teacher's explanation would be good enough, it wasn't by far as I found out. When my father got home, my mother told him about her school visit and I got a spanking. The following year, I was caught again and again. Finally, my mother was called into school again only this time the teacher used words like pervert and sick when all I still wanted to do was touch the clothes, but no one believed me. Upon getting home I was sent to my bed area to await my father. Now I cried, I knew that meant a beating, a heck of a beating. I don't know how long I cried but the time came when I heard him come into the house and I heard my mother tell him about her school visit. In the back of the house, we lived in, was a wooden tool shed filled with lawn equipment and other things. When my mother was done talking, my father came into my bed area furious and dragged me out, not saying a word, he grabbed me and pulled me out into that shed. Once inside he smacked me across my face, bent me over and beat my rear over and over again with his hand as I cried in pain. He then took a stick and restarted hitting me all over again. I don't know how long this went on. But when he was done, he called me a sick brat saying that he would beat the sickness out of me if it continued and with that walked out of the shed, leaving me crying and sobbing as he padlocked the door leaving me alone in the dark. I cried for hours and ended up sleeping on the floor that night with no dinner. I was wakened by the sunlight hitting my face as my father opened the door the next morning. Get in the house and take a bath, he said as I ran past him. Life was very different after that. My brother, who died in a car accident two years back was older than I was, and I could remember him because he was their favorite and he enjoyed getting me in trouble which he did often. If I tried to tell the truth, I was hit for lying and my brother laughed at me while it was happened. If someone gave me a present for my birthday and he liked it, he took it and told out parents that I gave it to him and, as always, they believed him and not me. When he was died, I got a spanking for not crying and then one evening, after my father reviewed my report card, I heard, why couldn't it has been reversed, he said as I walked by. My report card wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. But I knew what he meant. I felt like a stranger in that house from then on. I just wasn't what my parents expected. I tried hard not to touch girls' clothes again, but I did. By the time I was seven I had gotten many spankings or beatings, depends on which parent did it. My parents were clearly ashamed of me and let me know it. My father called me a short, weak useless boy that he was stuck with. I cried many a night wishing I could be brave enough to run away but I was always afraid of getting caught and brought back for a worse beating. Nothing I did seemed to be good or correct to my parents. My life was limited to playing outside with the kids, but even that was limited because I was afraid to play in any sport for fear I would miss the ball, miss the basket, or miss the goal line and hearing from my father was a disappointment I was. Because I didn't join in all the time, I was shunned by most of the boys, so my world of fun was very small. I didn't own a bike and my brother's was given away to someone. Inside, I didn't have many toys and my brother's toys that weren't given away were off-limits even though he were dead. Television was my father's domain. He selected what we watched and when we watched, and we only watched the television after dinner. There were no Saturday morning cartoons ever. When we were watching television, I could not speak or ask questions and I was even afraid to ask laugh if something funny happened for fear of interrupting my father's enjoyment. My life is barely livable and each morning I woke up in fear of getting hit for something or another. Then one day I was told that my mother and father were going away for a three-day weekend to visit friends and they didn't want me to be with them so instead I would be staying at my Aunt Mabel's house during that time as they didn't want to bring me because I would embarrass them, they said. I didn't know much about my aunt, other than she also lost a child and her husband in a car accident and now lived alone upstate. My brother died in that same car. We had visited them on Easter a few years back when my brother was alive, yet another trip I hated because of my clothes. My brother played with their daughter and used to laugh at me. I just sat and watched alone. Funny that now they are both dead and I live in hell. I was afraid to ask if I had to be dressed up but as I saw my mother pack my clothes, I saw that nothing dressy was being packed and while my pants were starched, my t-shirts were too but not as much. My mother didn't speak to me much as we got in train, 
to take me over to my aunt's. Other than saying I had better behave and if they got a bad report, I would get another beating. I was not looking forward to this trip at all but at eight years of age, one does not have much choice, I had no idea how this simple visit would change my life forever. Upon our arrival, and after taking a cab from the train station, mother took my hand and pulled me up the stairs and into her house. It looked bright and colorful. It wasn't really super big, but it was hers, and it looked nice. My parents rented out the first floor of the house we lived at because I remember my father paying someone the rent, but he also took care of the house as there was another family living above us. My aunt was smiling as she opened the door of her house but that quickly faded as my mother pushed me inside once again, telling me to behave or else. My aunt clearly didn't expect that because she looked a little shocked. With a few words to my aunt, my mother turned and left without any goodbyes or anything of the kind. I started to cry. I was afraid to do anything for fear of yet another beating. Do I talk? Do I just stand here? I was literally afraid to move. My aunt saw this then bend down to me and said, Jimmy, don't cry, you and I are going to have a fun weekend. Gently taking my hand I walked, and was not pulled, into her kitchen where she asked if I would like some milk and cookies. I was still frozen and said nothing because that never happened in my house. Well, I think you do so sit down and enjoy them and she placed a glass of ice-cold milk in front of me with a plate of homemade cookies on it. Knowing you were coming, I made these just for you. I hope you like them, she said. I still did not move. Go ahead honey, it's alright, you're not in trouble here and you never will be, she said drying my tears. I looked up at her. I promise, now please eat some cookies and drink the milk. I took a cookie and bit into it, it was good, very good in fact that I ate another. Well, I am so glad you like them, that makes me happy, she said with a smile. I smiled back, realizing that I wasn't in trouble here, and she did seem very nice to me. She watched, always smiling as I had a few more cookies and drank the milk. When I was done, she took me by the hand and said, let me show you the room you will be sleeping in, I hope you like it, she said as she gently led me upstairs to a bedroom and told me that I would be sleeping here during my visit. The room was very pretty. Much nicer than the cot where I slept back at home. The walls were power pink with white trim and the bed was so pretty and the mattress was soft and pulled up in the middle with a white and pink bed spread on it and the matching pillow. It had what I later found out to be a canopy over it that matched the room. Looking around I saw the bedside white lamp with a pink shade that also matched the room. There was also a dresser with a pretty cloth on top of it, a small table with a mirror behind it and a chair that not only looked very pretty, but it also looked very comfortable. And there was a white carpet on the floor around the bed. I saw a shelf in the wall with books and dolls on it as well as a closet. There were three windows all adorned with lacy pink curtains and trim. I could not believe that anyone had a room so pretty and I was going to sleep here. She said to me, this was her daughter's room, and I never had the heart to change it. I just kept looking around at the bookshelves, the dolls, the dresser, and the mirrors. It was so much to take in and my eyes were clearly bathing in it when she said, I hope you don't mind sleeping here but if you do I have a rollout I can set up in the living room. I slept on a rollout at home and I didn't want to sleep on another especially with such a nice a comfortable bed before me. Oh no, this is very nice thank you. I will sleep here if I may, I replied. But of course, you may, she said smiling as she placed my case on the bed and opened it. Clearly, she was taken back with the contents as she felt the stiffness of my clothes, especially my pants. She sorted out what little I had and said to me, Honey are your clothes always too stiff? Yes, Aunt Mabel, my daddy wants them this way, I said with a very downtrodden look. Do you like them like this? She asked sounding very concerned. No, not at all I hate my clothes, I said in almost an outburst. I almost cried when she said, Don't fret dear, let me see what I can do about them, and repacked all but some of my t-shirts back in the case. There are no books or toys for you. Didn't you want to bring any? She questioned. I don't own any books or have toys that I could have brought Aunt Mabel, I said looking down. Well, you certainly can read anything you find here but we don't have any boy toys I am afraid, she said to me. 
You stay here and get familiar with your room for the weekend, and I will rewash these clothes for you to soften them up. And with that she left the room, and I was in heaven. The room was so pretty, so clean and everything was so nice looking and soft. I knew I would like it here. I picked up my shirts and went over to the dresser to put them away but when I opened the drawer it had blouses in it. I opened another to find girls' underpants. Another with girls' gloves and socks. I knew I was wrong and listened for my aunt as I touched each piece. I dare not lift them for fear she would notice. Everything felt wonderful. I knew that for three days I could touch anything I wanted when I was in this room. But a little boy has to explore more so I opened the closet and to my shock and surprise I found dresses, really pretty dresses. White, pink, baby blue and light green little girl dresses. I had to touch each one, and that felt wonderful, so soft, so pretty. And so many. There were other things as well and skirts and other stuff too. Of course, I didn't know what they were called then. But I would soon found out. I dragged over the chair from the desk so I could explore the shelves above the dresses and just when I got on the chair, the bedroom door opened, I got startled and I fell down in surprise. Oh, my she gasped, are you all, right? She said as she ran over and picked me up off the floor. But instead of being upset with me she merely asked what I was doing up on the chair. I started to cry in fear that I had been caught. There is nothing to cry about honey, it's all right, I don't mind. Let me see, were you reaching for this? She said as she pulled down a round box and opened it. When she did, I forgot my pain and looked inside to see all kinds of pretty hats. These were some of Jenny's hats, she said. She had one for every dress she owned and there are more hat boxes still up there. As she spoke, I gently rubbed my hand on the lace or the bow. Seeing that she said, let me show you, as she took out a dress and pulled out the matching hat. I touched the dress and enjoyed its softness. It made me smile. Seeing my reaction, my aunt laid the dress on the bed and reached for another, again, I felt it, again she saw that, so she reached for another, and I felt that one too. Each time she placed a dress on the bed, it was closer and closer to my hand. Soon every dress was on the bed with some on my lap and I touched and felt each one with a smile. Now my aunt was pointing out the felt, the lace, the satin, and the petticoats if they had one. I was in softness heaven. I must have smiled from ear to ear. Do you like the feel of these clothes, Jimmy? She asked. I think you do. I think you like them very much, don't you, Jimmy? I was afraid again. I froze. Jimmy, you can tell me. I won't tell anyone. Cross my heart it and it will be our little secret all right, she said in a soft loving tone, and I melted as I said yes and cried. She took me into her arms and hugged me. It's all right, don't worry, I promise, this is our little secret between you and me, honey okay? Okay, I do like them I said as I dried my tears, still shaking a bit. Good now come with me and I will show you the rest of the house, she said. I want you to be comfortable here Jimmy. And showed me each room, one by one, where she slept, the living room. The upstairs bath the sitting room, and the dining room. The downstairs bath, that had no tub, the kitchen, the living room and even the back pouch. She even showed me the basement, always talking nicely with no hollowing or anything mean. I want you comfortable here Jimmy, I want you to feel at home, she said nicely to me. I could not tell her, but I never felt comfortable at my home. Then she continued to take me out to the garden, the garage, and the yard. I saw a pretty girl's bike hanging in the garage. I never owned a bike and therefore never learned how to ride. We went back inside, and she asked me if I liked her house, of course I did and asked if I thought I would be happy here. I responded with a big yes that made her happy. Soon it was time to make dinner and I asked if I could help and with a big smile said I could. I saw a very pretty apron and I asked if I could wear it and she replied, of course, and helped my into it. It went over my head and tied in back with a big bow. This was not a boy's apron, but I didn't care and neither did my aunt. She showed me where the placemats were and asked me to put them on the table along with the dishes and flatware. He said I was a big helper and she missed that because her daughter Jenny always did that for her and worn that very same apron too. Dinner was nice, 
I felt comfortable eating, the food was good, and I wasn't always in trouble for something. Here I wasn't afraid to spill something or get food on the table and make a mess like at home. That is when I figured out that I would not be hollered at all the time. It was nice here I was even allowed to wear the apron throughout dinner. I even helped clean up because I felt happy and wanted to help. Afterwards I finally had to take the apron off and we went inside to watch television and my aunt asked me what like to watch and I said I didn't know as my parents always picked the channel, never me. I think that troubled her because she slowly flipped though the channels asking me what I liked. That never happened before but I did end up picking one that we both watched. I think I must have still looked nervous because my aunt said to me, Jimmy, you can relax here, you are not in trouble, and I will never ever hit you for anything. I want you to feel at home, but better than home, I want you to be happy here, all right honey? That did make me feel so much better and her voice was so nice, not sharp or mean like at home, so I said with a small smile, all right Aunt Mabel, I will try. Good honey, but now it is time for bed. Go upstairs and wash up. I will be right up, she said. I took my clothes off but for my underpants and washed up trying hard not to make a mess. When I was done, I returned to the room and sat on the bed. My aunt opened my suitcase and stopped and said to me, You mother did not pack any pajamas for you Jimmy. Did she forget? She asked. Oh no, Aunt Mabel, I hate my pajamas as they hurt me when I sleep being so stiff and all. So. I don't wear them. One day my mother got mad at me and threw them all out. I just sleep in my underpants now, I told her. Shocked, she replied, well okay for now but I will have to do something about that. She tucked me into the bed, it felt so nice and soft the way she said, good night. Something my mother never said, made me go fast to sleep. The next morning after having a nice dream, I awoke to hear my aunt coming up the stairs. Good morning, sweetie. Did you sleep well? She asked, always with a smile. Yes, thank you, I said as I rose up in the bed. She then said, time to get dressed. And I made a sad face. She saw it right away. She sat on the bed next to me, put her arm around me looking closely at me and said softly, sweetie, would you like to wear one of my Jenny's dresses today instead of your clothes? You're about the same size as my Jenny and I think they will fit you. I must have light up or something. Afraid to say yes, I looked at her, not saying anything but my aunt knew the answer. I tell you what, you go and take a nice bath and I will lay out your outfit, okay? She laughed as I tried to get out of the bed at record speed. Let me draw your bath for you and left the room ahead of me and headed for the bathroom. I heard the water come on as I entered the room. When she returned, she saw my underpants and smiled. Put those in the hallway when you remove them. Now, I want you to wash good and then soak for a while and I will get things ready for you. I looked into the tub wondering if she was watching me, so I turned, and she was not. I dropped my underpants right then and there. And entered the tub. The bath was filled with bubbles. I smiled. I never had a bubble bath before and quickly sat down. I laid back and enjoyed the bubbles and the water smelled very nice too. Back home a bath is in and out and the water is always too hot. But here I relaxed, finally after everything, I was feeling relaxed and my inner tension was fading away. I grabbed the pretty smelling soap and a light blue face cloth and washed myself. I saw a big sponge next to the tub, but I dared not use it or even touch it for fear of getting my aunt upset. After a while my aunt came in with a towel and some underwear. She looked over and said, Oh, I see you didn't use the sponge, you could have honey. It is very soft and nice to use. When she left, I let the water drain and stepped out of the tub. The towel was so soft and fluffy, and I enjoyed drying myself like never before. I never felt such a softer towel. After I was dry, I reached for the underwear and immediately saw that these were not mine. The underpants were super soft with fuzzy lace strips running around them in four layers. And were pink. I picked them up and slowly slipped them on. As I pulled them on they caressed my legs going up. They felt really nice, and I just marveled at their softness. I reached for the undershirt, and it too was nothing like I owned. The straps were thinner and lined with lace. 
There was a tiny flower where the straps met in the front, and it was lighter and so much softer than I ever had. Like the underpants, these two was super soft to the touch. So different from anything I ever knew. As I put it on, it too felt wonderful, and gave me a chill. I heard my aunt call me and I headed back to the bedroom to see a bright wall lacy dress on the bed waiting for me. I also saw socks and patent leather shoes. My aunt smiled when she saw me enter the room. I knew they would fit you, you are about the same size as my Jenny. Come over here and let's try the dress on. Arms up, she said as she lowered the dress onto me. I didn't know that girls didn't step into their clothes like boys did. As the dress came down, she had me slip my arms into the balloon shoulder sleeves and with a final tug, it was on. She turned me around to button up the back and I felt it encompassing me and when she was finished, she took the cloth belt hanging from the dress and tied it into a large bow behind me. She adjusted something here and something there. When she was all done, I went to a mirror when I heard, we're not done young lady, come back here and sit on the bed, she said. I turned and went to sit on the bed, when she stopped me and said, always sweep your skirt flat under you before sitting or you will winkle it and she showed me what she meant. I did as I was told and sat. Then she took my foot and put a nice soft white lace sock on it. She did the same to the other one. When she was done adjusting them, she folded the tops down a little just like I saw on other girls. She kept it up until they were just right then she picked up one of the shoes and placed it on my foot closing the single strap and then proceeded to do the same with the other foot. Then she brushed my hair with her hand and placed a clip of some sort in my hair and put a thin necklace around my neck. I just knew her clothes would fit you, you are the same height and build, she said now, come and look at yourself, she said sounding almost sad. She took me over to a large mirror and looking back at me was a pretty little girl with a tiny bow in my hair. These clothes fit really well and were so nice to wear and very soft. Best was that they didn't hurt me at all. I looked so pretty I twirled around and smiled. In the mirror I could see that my aunt was crying. I turned and asked if I did something wrong and she bent over and hugged me very tightly and said, I'm sorry sweetie, nothing at all but you could be my Jenny's twin sister, you look just like her. You can call me Jenny, Aunt Mabel if that would make you happy. She hugged me again. Yes it would honey, very much, she said not letting go. When she finally did, she asked me if I liked the clothes I was wearing. I love them mommy. I love them, I said and with that she started crying all over again and I guess I did too. I'm sorry, I don't want you to cry Aunt Mabel, I cried for fear I was in trouble once again. Oh no Jenny, she said, mommy isn't mad, but it has been a long time since I heard that name. You can call me mommy and I would rather you did as long as you're wearing her clothes, and this will be our little secret. Is that all right Jenny? She said in a loving tone. All right. I like calling you mommy, I said. And I like hearing it. Now let us dry our tears and get downstairs for breakfast but first Jenny, I have to ask you, do you want to change back into your old clothes, or would you rather wear this outfit for the rest of the day? I looked up at her with big smile. These mommy, I want to wear these, I said holding out the skirt of my dress. She smiled and said, I thought so honey, I thought so. So now, Take my hand and let's go down and make breakfast together as a mother and her daughter should. Hand in hand, we both happily went downstairs and into the kitchen. Together we made breakfast, cleaned up, set the table again for lunch, and later in the day after exploring the feeling of the wonderful clothes, helped make lunch with me wearing that pretty apron. Mommy showed me how to cut the lettuce, how to cut a tomato, and spread the dressing and so on, Mommy even made the sandwiches with the crust removed. She had lemonade for us and gave me a napkin to wipe my face. I felt so pretty, and I felt nice. Nicer and safer than I had ever felt in a long time. I could not remove the smile from my face. I kept looking at myself in the hallway mirror. Mommy just smiled each time I did. Yes, Jenny, you are a very pretty little girl and girls look at themselves all the time so enjoy yourself honey. I came back to the table sat as I was taught, and finished my lunch. Mommy gave me that pretty apron again to help clean up, I think she knew I like it. Afterwards we played some games, and she even taught me how to play chess. 
I don't know if I enjoyed the playtime or the just wearing these clothes as my mother never to the time to sit down to play with me. I washed my hands a lot afterwards so I could touch my dress, my shoes, and my socks. I loved to touch them, and I loved how they felt. Dinner that night was just as nice as I set the table, mommy prepared the food and promised after dinner she would teach me how to sew. I didn't know it at the time, but she was enjoying our weekend just as much as I was. She was glowing all the time and I guess I was too. I had never been happier. After we cleaned up and washed all the dishes, mommy sat me down to teach me how to sew. She had these little circles with cloth in them and you could see a picture of a flower. She taught me how to stay in the outline as I pulled the needle and thread in and out. She taught me how to thread a needle with different colors and left me alone to sew. I loved it and sewed all night. When she finally came back in, I was on a good start and completed three colors. She looked at and exclaimed, Oh honey you did a real good and I know you want to continue, but it is bedtime I'm afraid. I put down my sewing and looked up at her sadly because I knew I had to take these wonderful clothes off. Mommy saw my look and said, Oh, I think you will be happy Jenny, Mommy has a surprise for you upstairs. That made me smile as I went upstairs with Mommy close behind. I entered the bedroom to find a very pretty nightgown with matching underpants on the bed for me. My face lit up and I quickly undressed once Mommy unbuttoned my dress and I washed up. Mommy was happy too as she took off my undershirt and had me change my underpants to what she called sleep panties. These were even softer, so I was happy to do it. After washing she placed the nightgown over my head and just let it drop down around me, encircling me in softness. I again had to look in the mirror. I looked and felt so pretty, and I was happier than ever. Mommy pulled down the sheets on the bed and said, Okay honey, it's time for little girls to go to bed and you are my little girl aren't you, Jenny? Oh yes mommy, I quickly replied. Good. Now the prove it to me by going right to sleep. And with that she leaned over to give me a kiss on the forehead. Sweet dreams baby girl, she said as she turned the light off and went downstairs. I loved how the bed felt, how the nightgown felt all over me. I must have drifted off into a deep sleep because before I knew it mommy was waking me, and the sun lit up my whole room. Time to get up for church honey, she said happily. I looked confused, my parents never went to church since my brother's death, and I didn't want to wear my boy clothes for it, but as I got out of bed, I noticed that mommy was pulling more girl clothes out of the closet and drawers. She looked over at me and smiled, I didn't think that Jimmy would go to church, but I think my Jenny will she said smiling as she pulled up my nightgown. Oh yes mommy I said, can I be Jenny all day again? I asked. Of course, my dear. I was hoping you would say that. I donned a fresh pair of panties as mommy called them but this time my undershirt looked a bit like a dress, and I guess my look showed my confusion. This is called a slip honey, it will make the skirt of your dress flare out more, she said as she placed it on me and pulled it straight. She then placed the pink dress over me and pulled it down putting my arms into the quarter length sleeves. Mommy was right, the slip did help push out my skirt. I enjoyed seeing the effect it had on my dress. This time the soft white socks all the way up to just below my knees and ended there. The shoes were different too with a strap going behind my foot instead of over it. The heel was just a little higher as well. Once the socks were in place mommy came over with white cotton gloves for me to wear. They were all white lace, and I never wore anything like these before. I out them on and just looked at them. And just when I thought we were all done, mommy reached for that box she showed me yesterday and took out a hat that matched my dress. She handed it to me saying she would place it on me before we left the house. Before I could leave the room to go downstairs, she handed me a little shiny white purse and showed me how to put my arm through the handles and bend my arm a little to hold it and then she said she would meet me downstairs. Holding to the banister, I carefully headed downstairs to the big hallway mirror to see myself. I slipped my arm through the purse as I tried to put the hat on to no avail. But I turned to see mommy smiling at me and took the hat and placed it on my head with the help of a few bobby pins. I looked at myself in the big hall mirror and saw a pretty girl looking back. Then mommy reached into the hallway closet and came out with a coat for me that had a fur collar and fur chiffs on the sleeves. I loved putting it on, I think I always wanted to wear a coat like this. 
I went to button it up when I noticed the buttons were on the wrong side, but I managed as mommy watched and said, Honey, girls' clothes have the buttons on the opposite side that boys do. I had to look in the mirror again. I loved looking like a girl and I loved my clothes. I wanted to tell her that I wanted to be a real girl but then mommy rushed us out to church saying we were late and that we would get breakfast at a dinner after the services. We drove along chatting with mommy telling me how happy I made her feel by being her Jenny for a few days. I was happy too wearing her clothes. This weekend tuned out better than I could have ever imagined. And I never thought I would never ever get to wear such soft and pretty things. Mommy parked in the church parking lot and after giving me the once over, we headed into the church with mommy holding my hand. She took us into a pew toward the back and we sat. I was about to try and take my hat off when mommy stopped me and said, girls kept their hats on in church and besides, it is pinned to your head and will not come off. I smiled when I realized she was right. After church as promised, we went to a diner and sat down. Mommy unpinned my hat so I could remove it and she motioned for me to remove my gloves as well and place them in the hat. It was all so girly, and I loved it. I also took the napkin and put it on my lap to protect my dress without being told to as mommy showed me. We had a nice breakfast of waffles and strawberries. As we ate our breakfast, mommy said to me, You look like you are enjoying being a girl, are you? She asked. Oh yes mommy. I like being a girl and I really like being Jenny, being pretty and getting to wear such soft and nice clothes all the time that really fit me and that makes me all happy inside, I said to her. Then we shall have to do this again, won't we Jenny? She said with a big smile. Oh yes mommy, I do want to do this again with you, I said as I ate my waffle. After breakfast we took a walk in the park and smelled some flowers. It was a beautiful and sunny day out. Walking with her holding my hand made me feel safe and happy. But I knew tomorrow it would all end, but I was so happy for now to think about that. Today, I was a girl, a happy girl. As we left the park, we walked down the street to get back to mommy's car and we passed a store that sold girls' clothes. I stopped to look in the windows. Mommy bent over to me and said, Maybe someday mommy will take you into a store like this one and buy you more pretty clothes. Would you mommy? promise? I said excitedly. Cross my heart, Jenny, I promise. We walked back to the car, and I got in, mommy then drove us home. When we got home, mommy and I played some chess and watched some television. Then I tried my sewing again. I liked doing that, it seemed. Later mommy suggested that I take a bath and put on my nightgown so we can spend the evening in our sleep clothes and be more comfortable. Being still in our Sunday clothes, I think mommy was right, and I didn't want to dirty such pretty clothes, so I did as she said and went up to take a bath. She ran the water and added bubble bath to it and laid out my night clothes as I undressed and headed for the tub. I washed and mommy shampooed my hair saying that I should try to let it grow for my next visit so mommy could do my hair pretty for me. She dried me and told me to go and get dressed and I ran to my room knowing something was pretty waiting for me. And I was right. That same very pretty lacy white nightgown was on the bed along with matching panties waiting for me which I quickly tried to put on. I tried the nightgown but got lost in the layers or something, but mommy was there to rescue me and helped it on me. She handed me fuzzy slippers to wear and a sleep jacket that matched the nightgown. Mommy said it was chilly downstairs and the jacket helped. I loved the feel of it and the gown. And I felt the ruffles on my panties each time I sat down. We headed downstairs and I picked up my sewing kit and started working on it again. Mommy just smiled at me as she watched. After some more television, it was bedtime again, she announced and I knew that tomorrow meant that mommy would drive me home, my visit with her was over. As I got into the soft pink bed, I started to cry, and mommy came over. Honey it will be all right. We will have lots of time together again, I promise, and tomorrow you can be Jenny till after lunch, okay honey? You wait and see, you will be my Jenny again, I promise, and with that she laid next to me holding me and humming a song. I fell into a deep wonderful sleep. The next morning the sun woke me up as did the smell of freshly cooked bacon. Over my chair were some clothes and a one piece I later found out was a wide leg ruffle belted romper. A one-piece outfit that included both pants and blouse. 
along with a pretty lace undershirt and matching panties. There were white socks of course with pink checked sneakers. Everything once again fit me so well and I loved it. After looking it over and feeling very hungry I managed to put all the clothes on and as I looked at myself, I saw that mommy was right, I needed longer hair, I wanted longer hair and, after tying the last sneaker, I went downstairs. Oh, what a good girl you are, and you managed to dress yourself this morning and how pretty you look Jenny, I thank you for doing that, she said as she came over to me with a big smile and hug. Then backing off, she looked at me and said, so how do you like your outfit? I like it mommy, it isn't pants, and it reminds me of a dress, I answered. It is called a rumper and it is a one-piece outfit as you can see but for you, I picked out a very pretty rumper with the buttons on the side for you. I am so glad you like it. When you return, I have all kinds of nice clothes for you to wear if you want. Oh, I will want mommy, I want to wear them all, I replied to her as she fixed my plate. I ate my breakfast in silence. I didn't want this day to end, I didn't want to stop being Jenny. I helped mommy in the kitchen, again with the apron and later in the garden. Mommy said I was a very good helper. I just wanted to be a good girl. Mommy and I did some shopping and cleaned up my room. Mommy did the wash and later showed me how to fold my pretty clothes and how to put them away. She said, all for your return, everything will be ready for you honey, these are your clothes now. Do you understand? I thought you said they were Jenny's? I asked. Yes, they are. And who are you? She asked, looking at me with a questioning look. It took a second, but I bust out and said, I am Jenny. Yes, you are honey, my Jenny. You will always be my Jenny, she said as she hugged me. I love my Jenny, and kissed my forehead. I love you mommy. I love being your Jenny too. I said as our hug continued. Together we made lunch, mommy cut the bread and I added the cold cuts. I poured us some lemonade and we sat to eat. I looked around as we did. Before I could cry, mommy said, I promise honey, you will be back, and we will have lots of good times, you and I, now promise me you will not cry at your house and if you tell your parents what we did, our little secret, or you will never come back here, so don't please. I want you back as much as you want to come back. Can you do that for me honey? Yes mommy, I will, I promise, I said wiping a tear. All right then, go play while I pack your boy stuff and get your traveling clothes. And she went back upstairs. I went to my sewing and sat and watched some television. Not long after, I was called upstairs. Upon entering my room, I saw my old boy's clothes on the bed and wanted to cry. Jenny. I rewashed your trousers and got out all the starch. Then I used a fabric softener on all of your clothes. While they will not be as nice as what you have on now, they are much nicer than when you came here on Friday. I will leave you alone to dress but keep saying I will be back over and over again as you dress. When I came back down, I was Jimmy. Mommy was right, my clothes were nicer than ever, but they were still not pretty. I slowly walked to the car trying hard not to cry. The drive back to my house was quiet, but Aunt Mabel telling me not to frit and that all would be fine in time and how I would be back before I knew it. We pulled up to my place and Aunt Mabel took my hand and together we walked to the house. She let go when she rang the doorbell. My mother answered and immediately asked how I behaved. Not, you were missed, how are you, nothing of the kind but my aunt gave a charming and glowing report on my behavior. My aunt stayed for a cup of tea and then said her goodbyes giving me a slight kiss on my forehead as always. When my mother closed the door she went about her business, never saying a word to me. I went outside to play but mainly just walked around with my memories of being Jenny. The softness of my clothes disappeared soon enough when my mother washed them and restarched everything. When the next three-day weekend came and went, nothing was said about going anywhere, and certainly not Aunt Mabel's. Then others came as well and nothing. My hopes diminished. Then one day another boy showed up. He was older than I and a friend of the family and a former friend of my brother. Eddie was his name and my parents loved him and were not shy about it. 
They talked like he was their son and made him special dinners and even cleared out a room in the basement for him because I found out he was going to stay for the summer as his family was moving to Michigan and needed time to get organized. You would think Eddie was my brother the way they catered to his every wish while I got nothing. I was told how good he was in sports of all kinds and had an outstanding report card every time. Eddie only stayed for the day, he left to return in June and move in. His stuff would be shipped to us beforehand. My birthday came and went without even a card. I think my parents hated me. The only time I spoke was in school and even that was hard seeing all the girls in their pretty clothes. I longed for a dress, now that I knew how they felt to wear. I wished my underpants were soft and my shoes pretty. Life at home was get up, washing up, making my bed, and putting it away, and eating the same cereal for breakfast every morning. My mother barely spoke to me, in fact rarely looked at me. Life was dull and very quiet. During the last days of school before summer, we had a class field trip to a city museum. It had rooms and paintings from 100 years ago and we saw how they lived and how they dressed in lots of layers of clothes. I envied the ladies in their pretty gowns, full, long, and very pretty. One dress caught my attention and the teacher had to pull me away from looking at it. It reminded me of a dress I once wore at Aunt Mabel's. I wish I could wear it again, but it didn't seem possible anymore. When school finally let out, I was sad seeing the pretty girls outside playing, watching them jump rope and play hopscotch. They were always so happy and laughing but would not let me play with them and even once told my teacher who came over and told me that boys didn't play those games. But the boys didn't want to play with me since I was so short and besides boys were rough and mean. They would always get into fights and tore their clothes. I would get a beating if I tore mine and I knew it, so I stayed alone in the playground. When I returned home and school was closed for the summer, I had to hand my report card over and I knew I would get hit again because my grades were okay, but they weren't great, I passed and got promoted, but I still worried. But I noticed my bed was gone and there was a packed suitcase in its place. Was I being thrown out? I was afraid but didn't ask. My mother came in and said, we're doing some rearrangements before Eddie comes and you, young man are going away to your Aunt Mabel's for the summer. Since she liked you so much, you can stay there for the summer, and we won't have to put up with you, she said. I wanted to jump for joy, a huge smile appeared on my face and that made my mother very mad, and she slapped me across my face. I quickly stopped smiling, but not for fear of another slap, but because she may change her mind and I would not be going to my aunt's house. You little bastard, you like her but not us, who work hard to put food on the table and clothes on your back. You ungrateful brat, she said slapping me again as she said storming out of the room. The slap hurt and I cried. I just sat in a kitchen chair and waited for my father to get home and see my report card. I knew that was coming. But instead, I heard a car horn and my mother picking up my suitcase saying, Your ride is here you little brat, maybe your aunt can knock some sense into you. I was rushed out of the house and my case was thrown into the back seat. I climbed in the front with my aunt who so far has not looked at me, but rather my mother went on and on about me and even told my aunt that, if need be, to feel free to hit me as she saw fit as much as she wanted to. I just sat with my head down. My aunt just drove off for a few blocks, turned the corner and parked. She turned to me with a big smile and open arms. Welcome back Jenny, I missed you so much. I burst into tears as I went into her arms crying. I missed you too, mommy. After a few hugs and wiping our tears away she drove away, she spoke of her plans for us and the fun we would have. I was so happy to be with her for the whole summer, I started to cry a little. Oh honey, don't cry. Everything will be fine, she said. I wiped my tears and said, I know mommy, I know, but I am so happy, then mommy started singing and I joined her. Yes, it was going to be a great summer. I see you let your hair grow, good girl, now mommy can make it pretty for you, she said as we finally pulled up to her house. With a big smile she said, so, tell me, do you want to be Jenny for the entire summer? Because if so, then there is no need for your suitcase so I will put in the basement along with the clothes you are wearing now because my Jenny does not wear boy clothes, right, Jenny? 
Right, Mommy and I want to be Jenny all the time, I said with a big grin as I got out of the car. Then go upstairs to your room, under dress, and I will pour you a bath with pretty scented oil and bubbles that I know you like. You outfit is already laid out for you Jenny, she said I got out of the car. I ran upstairs in a flash to the bathroom. I looked for my panties and undershirt but didn't see them. Then mommy came in, turned on the water and added the scented stuff with the bubble bath. You can get in while it is filling if you like Jenny. I will collect up Jimmy's clothes and put them away, she said as she gathered the clothes I just took off. I liked that she called them Jimmy's things and not yours. I got in and sat back and relaxed. I was safe and I knew it but more importantly, I was happy, happy to be back and happy to soon be wearing soft and pretty clothes. After washing, I soaked until mommy came in and told me she was going to shampoo my hair and did so with pretty smelling stuff. Now it was time to get out. I really love these bubble baths, but mommy said it was time, so I got out and dried myself really good. Mommy wrapped me in a big towel and wrapped a smaller one around my head. Holding the towels in place, hurry to my room anxious to wear pretty clothes again. Mommy took out underwear for me to put on after dropping the big towel. It felt wonderful to wear soft undies again, and they were pretty too. This time Mommy had a different slip that I stepped into it, and she pulled up to my middle. Then she lowered a green print dress over me that was covered in flowers. It was so pretty. I slipped my arms into the short sleeves and mommy buttoned it up the back. I smiled from ear to ear and sat in the chair like I was shown last time and put my pretty light green socks on with the lace tops that folded down and my pretty shoes with one buckle in front. Mommy was waiting for me over at my dressing table with my head still wrapped in the small towel which she removed from my head and placed over my shoulders. Then she started bushing my hair. She parted it on top and brushed to the left and right and used a hair dryer on me. With scissors she cut my hair on the side right at my ears and then the left side as well and then the back of my head. She then brushed my hair down to my eyes and then cut off enough so I could see again with hair. She said she gave me bangs and that I had a bit of a natural wave. She held up some of my hair and then sprayed it with funny smelling stuff while I closed my eyes and did the same to the other side. I looked up at her when she said, go look at yourself, Jenny, I think you will be very happy, she said with a huge smile. And I did and what I saw was a girl with a real girl's haircut. Mommy called it a page boy, but I looked just like the girls in school only prettier. I lit up, I smiled and ran to her. Oh mommy, I am so pretty. Thank you, mommy, I said as I hugged her tight. Mommy hugged me back and told me, you are so welcome Jenny. I was happy and I knew how much she is enjoying having her daughter back again. And then still looking in the mirror, I said mommy, can I get holes in my ears like other girls have? I want to wear those pretty earrings in my dresser, please, pretty please mommy. That made mommy think and think hard, and then she said, oh what the heck, after lunch we will go to the mall and get your ears pierced. I just hope your parents do see them when you go back home. There is something else I had planned honey, and we need to go to my friend's house after the mall. So, with that we went downstairs to eat lunch and I was all excited, but mommy told me that my ears may hurt for a while until they heal, and I will have little gold studs in them until then and I needed to take care of them. I just smiled. We had a nice lunch of tuna fish and lettuce and lemonade as always. We cleaned up and I dried the dishes once again wearing that pretty apron and then off in mommy's car for a trip to the mall. I was so excited that I could not sit still. Mommy was smiling but she had a look of concern on her face as we went. When she parked the car, she turned to me and said, Are you sure you want this honey? This is forever, the holes will never go away, she said very seriously. Mommy I want to look just like all the other girls, and they have them, please mommy, can I? I pleaded. Okay honey, in for a penny, in for a pound, I guess. Let's go get your ears pierced Jenny. We walked around the mall until mommy found the piercing place and we went inside. The lady looked up and mommy told her she wanted to get her daughter's ears pierced. I was shown a tray of studs and asked to pick out which I wanted, and I picked the little stars. They then sat me in a tall chair and the lady said what a pretty girl I was and placed something onto my ear and I heard a pop, then she spin me around and did the same thing again to my other ear. Okay all done honey, go look at yourself in the mirror. 
And I did while mommy paid the lady. I stood in front of the mirror and saw two little gold stars, one in each ear. I smiled and looked again, I was a pretty little girl, in a green dress with a girl's haircut and pretty earrings in my ears, I was so happy. I turned to mommy and said, thank you so much mommy, I love them, I said very happily. You're very welcome Jenny, I just hope I didn't bite off too much, she replied. Then we left the mall and got back in mommy's car to go to her friend's house. As we mommy drove, she said her friend was a nurse and was going to help me look more like a girl in my panties, so nothing gives our secret away, since we will be together for over two months, since we will be together all summer, I don't want to take the chance of something sticking out at the wrong time. I think it is best, it will not hurt honey and I will be right there with you, all right, she said a little concerned. Yes, mommy if it helps me be a girl, I said. Mommy smiled as she parked the car and we walked to this lady's house hand in hand. She rang the doorbell and a lady answered. Hi Mabel, and this is, oh, my god Mabel, she is the spitting image of Dash Mommy cut her off. Yes, I know, my daughter Jenny. Looking at me said, say hello to my friend Carolyn, Jenny. Hello Miss Carolyn, I said. Well, hello to you Jenny. Please, come in, both of you she said as she held the door open for us. We went inside and sat in her kitchen when Carolyn said to Mommy, Does she know what you want done? Kind of and she does want to look like more like a girl, Mommy said. She came over to me and bent down and said, Okay Jenny, what I am going to do is make your little sack go away for a while and then glue your little thing to it and press it into your body so you don't really see it unless you look really closely, but remember Jenny, you will only be able to pee sitting down after this, do you understand? She asked. Oh, I only pee sitting down now Miss Carolyn. I hold it down with my hand. Well honey there will be no need to hold it after today. Come in my bedroom and remove your panties, she said. We all walked inside, I took off my panties and Carolyn placed a plastic sheet on her bed and told me to lay down on my back. Then she said to spread my legs as much as I could, and I did. Good girl, she said as she lifted my skirt up and had mommy hold it. She wiped me down there with that funny smelling doctor stuff and then pushed my little balls up inside me, while doing something with the sack and my boy thing. I felt something cold on me and Carolyn held some part of me closed for a few minutes. Then she put some thin tape on me and had me stand up. How does it fell Jenny? Mommy asked. I don't know mommy, I don't feel it moving or anything, but it does not hurt. Carolyn handed me my panties and told me to put them back on, which I did and marveled how flat I looked. I could not see my thing and went to reach for it when Carolyn said not to. Wait until your next bath to do that, she said. As I looked at myself in the mirror holding my dress up, Carolyn told my mommy that everything should hold fine and to come back next month and she would redo it if necessary. When we were back in the Carolyn's kitchen, Carolyn said to mommy, she looks just like your Jenny, Mabel, how far are you willing to push this? She asked. Just as far and as hard as I can. She loves being Jenny and I love having Jenny back. As long as we can keep this up, it is a win-win for both of us, Mommy said. I see you had her ears pierced, isn't that pushing it a bit far? Carolyn asked. She begged me to have it done so she can look like the other girls she said, and I am not stepping on that and it takes all my power not to encourage her to go further, because she isn't really my child, but if she were, yes, I would. I mean look at her, do you see even a hint of a boy, anywhere? She replied. Okay, I get it, more importantly I understand, Carolyn said. Remember to bring her back in a month and I will redo anything needed. By the way, I surprised her nails aren't polished. The day isn't over yet, Mommy said smiling, and I have her for two whole months, when it's over, and I have to return her, I hope to return more of a girl than a boy, Mommy said. With that they hugged, and we left. I felt funny between my legs, but nothing hurt or anything. I was feeling my dress as we pulled up to the house. Mommy looked at me and said, You really love being a girl don't you Jenny? Yes Mommy, and I love my clothes too. I wish I could wear them forever, I said back to her. Mommy sighed and whispered, me too baby, me too. 
After our visit mommy took me to the city aquarium to see the fish, it was really nice, I had never been to one before. We walked around and mommy got us some ice cream pops with napkins and I had to promise not to get any on my dress and I didn't. We had a nice time there and I learned a lot about fish and other sea life. As we left to go home, my ears felt funny, and I told mommy. She said we needed to clean the holes and rotate the earrings when we get home. I yawned because I was really tired. We had a full day. When we got home, mommy cleaned my ears and rotated the earrings, then she had me remove my shoes and lay down for a bit take a nap too and said, when you wake up sweetie, I'll polish your nails just like the other girls have. That made me smile as I laid my head down. I guess I went right out because the next thing I heard was mommy calling me to come downstairs. I jumped out of the bed and put my shoes on. My hair was mussed a bit and I tried to comb it, but I could not get it just like mommy did earlier in the day. I came downstairs upset that I couldn't get my hair just right and told mommy so. She smiled and told me to get the hairbrush and not the comb and come right back. In the past getting the hairbrush meant a beating, but not now and I smiled as I came back down with it and handed it to mommy. She took it and brushed my hair here and there and said, they're all done. I looked in the mirror and said, thank you mommy. And you are welcome, Jenny, now come over here and let's paint those nails so they can be dry before dinner. I almost ran to the table and saw that she had the polish and other things waiting for me. She cleaned my nails and then filed them, so they were all alike and of the same length and then she applied a deep pink polish one at a time to them being careful not to make a mistake. One by one they turned pink and looked pretty. When she was done, I just wanted to look at them, but mommy told me I had to dry them first, and not to touch them and then showed me how to wave my hands to dry them. While I was waving them, mommy placed a clip with a bow on it the same color as my nails and my hair. They're all pretty as you should be, she said smiling at me. Thank you, mommy, I love you, I said. I wanted to hug her, but she pointed to my nails and told me, after they are dry with a smile. They did of course dry, and we made dinner. I couldn't help looking at them. I had been here one day, and I'm wearing a dress, my hair is styled like a girl, my nails are painted pink, and I have earrings. I was so happy to be back and to be a girl again. As we ate, mommy looked at me with a warm smile and said, it is so good to have my little girl back home. I like being your little girl mommy, I really do. We have fun together and I like that and wish with all my heart that it never ends, I said back. Mommy just smiled and ate. I think she wished that too. After dinner we cleaned up. I developed a routine. I put on the apron that hung on the kitchen door and dried the dishes, and put away what I could reach, then I washed the table and set it for breakfast. Come upstairs, we'll put on our pajamas and watch some television and you can do your needlepoint too. But come upstairs, I have a surprise for my girl. We went upstairs and I watched while mommy pulled out my sleeping clothes. Now it is warm tonight and you only have a small air conditioning unit here so I think it would be best if you wore a short pajama set. Here let me show you Jenny dear. She held up a pair of deep pink shorts with two rows of ruffles on them and they weren't much bigger than my panties. She also held up matching top that had almost no sleeves, these sleeves were much shorter than my old t-shirts. It had a very deep neckline as well. It too had ruffles across the middle. Now I don't think any boy would ever wear these, but I think my girl will, am I right honey? Yes, mommy, I said as I unbuckled my shoes and took my socks off. Mommy unbuttoned the dress and lifted it over my head. I stepped out of the slip and handed it to mommy, who hung it up. She then lifted my undershirt off me and put the pajama top on me. It felt so cool and light that I raced to put the shorts on. I was handed a pair of white slippers with only one wide strap holding them to my feet. These were different than the last ones I wore here. I put them on, and they felt very nice. Mommy stepped back to look at me as I looked in the mirror. I looked pretty and I still had on my nail polish and earrings. Mommy told me to shake my head back and forth to unravel my head which was all messed up when the dress and undershirt came off. So, I shook my head to get my hair back down as mommy said to and it worked. Then mommy asked me how my ears felt, and I reached up and touched my little stars and said good. 
Then she said, you have to wear them for three full days before you take them out, and even then, you must replace them with others. The day after tomorrow you can pick out any earrings you wish to wear, all right honey? She continued, and tonight I am afraid you have to sleep with them and if you turn, they may hurt but you must keep them in or else the holes will close. You don't want that, do you? Oh no mommy, I love my pretty earrings and I will sleep with them. All right honey, put your slippers on and come downstairs with me. Okay mommy, but I need to do pee first. And I ran into the bathroom. When I joined her downstairs, she asked me if everything was okay with the adjustments down there. Oh yes mommy, I just sat and peed. I didn't need to hold it or worry about getting pee on the floor or anything. I like peeing like this, I said with a smile. I'm so glad honey, you make mommy very happy. Do you know that? She asked. I think so, I said, but I don't always understand why. That's okay Jenny, it doesn't matter really. Do you want to do your sewing? Maybe I said, but am I allowed to play with the dolls in my room mommy? I asked. Sweetie, it is your room, everything in there is yours. The dolls, the clothes, the jewelry, all of it is yours. You can play, read or wear, or whatever you want with your things, and you don't have to ask me for permission. It all belongs to you Jenny. Thank you, mommy. I want to play with the dolls tomorrow. The look very pretty, I said happily and went inside to pick up my needlework and mommy turned the television on. After a while, mommy went into the kitchen and brought out a plate of cookies for us and a glass of milk for me. I smiled at her. I just loved living here and being with mommy. I watched the television as I sewed, and I think I was doing a good job when mommy came over to look at it. Oh Jenny, you do such nice work and look how far you have gotten. What a good girl you are. I liked hearing that as it made me happy. I like being your girl mommy, I never want to go back to being a boy, never, ever. And then I cried. I know Jenny, I know and if I could stop that, I would, I love my girl and I will do whatever it takes to keep you here, with me, she said with tears coming down her cheeks. Please don't cry mommy, I said going to her. I'm sorry sweetie, and wiped her tears away. We watched the television a little longer and then it was bedtime. I put my needle point down and head up to my room. I stopped as I entered and looked around. This is my room, I thought. I never had my own room and this one is so pretty too. I turned and went to the bathroom, sat on the toilet, brushed my teeth, and washed up. I looked at my hair, it was so pretty and nice. I am so glad I didn't ask for a haircut. I wanted it even longer now. When I returned to my room, mommy had pulled down the sheets for me and gently tucked me into bed with a kiss. Good night, my little girl, sweet dreams. And turned the light off and left the room. I snugged up in the bed, feeling my pajamas and my sheets. Everything was so soft. I drifted off into a sound sleep. The next morning, I woke up and didn't hear mommy. I got out of my bed and went over to my dolls. They looked so pretty that I picked them up and put them on the little table in my room one at a time. I gave them names as I placed them in the doll furniture I found in the closet. Their legs bent and I was able to seat them around the toy table. I made believe they were talking and drinking tea when I heard a noise, turned, and saw mommy at the door looking in. Good morning mommy, I said as she stepped in. Good morning sweetie. Having fun with your dolls? She asked. Oh yes mommy, and look, I found the table and chairs for them too. I see, she said. There is more in the hall closet too. Did you give them names honey? Dolls need names you know. Yes, mommy. This is Betty and Mary and Barbie. Do you like their names mommy? I asked. Oh, but I do baby girl, I do, she replied. Now you have fun with your dolls while I make our breakfast. Do you want me to help mommy? I asked. No that is all right honey, today I'd rather you play with your dolls like all little girls do and I will call you down when it is ready. Okay mommy, I answered and went about playing. I did until mommy called me down for breakfast. As I ate mommy asked, so, you like playing with your dolls, I bet you don't have dolls back in your house. No. 
I don't have any dolls and not many toys, but I make my own fun mommy but I really I do like my dolls here. Well sweetie, we are going to have lots of fun here this summer. You wait and see, she promised. The very next day mommy let me pick out some of my earrings to wear and showed me how to wash them in alcohol and how to remove my studs and replace them with dangling earrings that I could actually feel moving when I walked. I really liked that as it made me feel real girly. The days went by, and I was happy, very happy. Mommy taught me how to play hopscotch and jacks. That was fun and one day show taught me how to skip rope. I really liked how my dress came up when I jumped. Mommy told me to practice every day I could, and I got good at it in a short time and showed Mommy. I also learned all the songs to sing while I jumped. I really was having lots of fun every day, and I got to wear soft, pretty clothes all the time. I even made a friend who lived down the road from us. Her name was Gina, and she was from Italy. She didn't talk English so good, but we got along. We played jacks together and sometimes we played with her dolls or mine. It was fun to have a friend. One day mommy said we would work in the garden and needed to wear coveralls. Mommy dressed me in a frilly white top with fluffy short sleeves, white socks, and pink sneakers with white laces. And a pretty coveralls that were adorned with flowers and lace on the edges. I felt like a real girl now and didn't think of myself in any other way. We cleaned out the weeds, straightened out the white stone border. We did a lot and then mommy said, Jenny, sweetie would go inside and bring mommy out a glass of water please? Okay mommy, I said, as I stood up and brushed myself off and went inside. I took a glass and filled it when I heard the doorbell ring. I saw a man outside and I went right to the back window and told mommy. Mommy got up and said to tell the man one minute. I did and soon mommy opened the door to see a vacuum salesman there. Hello. May I come in and demonstrate our new vacuum? It will not take long, he said. Why not? We need a break anyway, right Jenny? The man followed us into the living room, and we all sat down. You have a very pretty daughter there, Mrs., he asked. Piedmont, she answered. That is your daughter, I assume. She looks just like you, he said as he unpacked his wares. Mommy squeezed my hand, looked at me and said, Yes, Jenny is my daughter. I gave her a big smile and squeezed back. He showed mommy all the things he was selling and after a while he said goodbye and left. I don't think mommy got anything, but I didn't care because I was jumping rope outside. It was nice being with mommy, but I also knew the summer was coming to an end someday. My hair continued to grow with mommy trimming it as it did. It was now past my ears and almost down to my chin. Mommy put ribbons in my hair or different kind of clips and my favorite was a pink headband. Sometimes mommy made a ponytail on me with a pretty red bow. It made me look so pretty with my bangs in front. Mommy even gave me pigtails once, short but still pigtails. That summer, mommy had me wear all kinds of different clothes, from capris to shorts, pullover tops to blouses that closed in the back. I even wore a bathing suit to the town lake. It was blue with a yellow strip going up on the sides. It was so much fun for both of us trying on different outfits and sometimes she had me model them for her. It was so girly, and I loved it. I wore Mary Janes, flip-flops, loafers and sneakers that were all very pretty and I soon loved being pretty and checked myself in the mirror every chance I got. I also learned to change my earrings every day without help. And there wasn't a day that went by that I did not have earrings on. And mommy even suggested that I always wear some type of jewelry that matched my earrings for the day such as a bracelet or a necklace or both. I learned to dress myself each day and if I had a dress with buttons or zippers in the back, I needed mommy's help, but otherwise I was good. I did practice reaching behind me and working the zipper up and reaching down from the top to try and grab it and move it up further until it was closed. The hardest was the little hook on the very top. But I was determined to do it and one day I did. I was so happy looking in the mirror while pushing my dress in place. When mommy saw, she was so proud of me for doing that without any help. I knew there was closets of clothes, but I did prefer dresses and while mommy knew that, I was steered to other pretty outfits to wear as well. I helped mommy with the wash and she reminded me on how to fold all the clothes, carry them up to my room and put them away. I really liked helping her. 
We went on trips to farms where I could feed the animals, amusement parks where I went on rides, and malls where we did some shopping, and I always ended up with something new to wear. We always had fun together. Sometimes we had a picnic in the park or even in the backyard. It was always such fun. I had seen a bicycle in the garage and asked if I could learn to ride it. It was yellow and white, clearly a girl's bike and I wanted to ride it. Mommy took it down and brought it out for me. She gave me some lessons on how to ride it and after I while I did, wobbly at first to be sure, but soon I was riding it with no help. Mommy said the only rule was that I would not ride it in a dress. But a skirt and blouse was fine, and that was the day I was introduced to wearing skirts. We rode together and the next morning she asked if I wanted to ride the bike again and I said yes. Then she said, I have clothes for you to wear that were made for bike riding. They are called pedal pushers, come honey and let show you, she said. I watched as mommy opened the drawer in my closet and mommy pulled out pants that were white and covered in different flowers with tiny bows at the end of the legs. I saw there were others in there as well. Now I know you don't like pants, but these are very different, first off, they stretch fit you, have no pockets and have short legs so you can't get them dirty while pedaling you bike. Here try them on, she said. I took my nightgown off and pulled on the pants. They were very different indeed. They were very soft and fit skin tight and ended halfway between my knee and my ankle. They had no fly, not that I could use it or want to use it. In fact, these made my front look very flat and smooth, and I like that. Skin tight yet they were very comfortable to move in. Mommy gave me a blouse to wear over my undershirt which was yellow and very pretty. I went to tuck it into my pants when mommy stopped me and said, No honey, you wear a blouse outside, she said. She also pulled out special socks for me that barely covered my foot, she called them athletic socks. After I put them on, I put my sneakers on and you could barely see my socks. I smiled at mommy, and we went downstairs. Do you like your new outfit, Jenny? she asked. Oh yes mommy, these are not like any pants I ever wore before, I said with a smile as ate breakfast at record speed. Mommy laughed a little as I did. After breakfast I watched mommy get out my bike and another bike. It seems that mommy also had a bike, and we rode together down to and around the park. Afterward she confessed that she hadn't ridden since her daughter's accident and was very happy that she was riding again with me. As much fun as I was having, being with mommy and being a girl, I knew deep down it had to all end someday. Sadly, when summer was finally over, and the big day came when I had to go back to my parents. The day I dreaded with all my heart. Mommy cried a little as she packed my stuff. I cried a lot as I looked around my room. I will miss my clothes, my dolls, my earrings, my bike but especially my pretty soft and pretty clothes very much. Mommy made me take the out my earrings the day before so the holes would close a bit and hopefully would not be so noticeable. My ears felt naked, I missed them. I wore earrings every day since getting my first pair and it was strange not to have any on. My arms felt naked as well with no bracelet and I kept reaching for a necklace that was no longer there, we went to her friends to have my thing unglued and feeling it move around in my underpants again was strange. I begged not to get a haircut so mommy combed it back as best she could for me, but it was still long. My clothes, while softer than my mother ever did them, but it was still strange and uncomfortable to wear. Once in the car, I cried on the way to my parents and so did mommy. She parked around the corner from the house, took me into her arms and openly cried, I love you so much baby, I will try to get you again, I promise honey, I promise, she said as she wept. I cried too. I love you mommy, I don't want to be a boy again I so scared. I was shaking when mommy hugged me and said, I know baby, I know. Just pray hard that we will be together again soon honey, until then mommy will miss you so very much, she said, wiping her tears. She started up the car and drove to front of the house. We both got out and mommy picked up my suitcase and we walked hand in hand to the house, I was shaking even more now, and the tears started again. Mommy patted my hand trying to calm me, but it did no good. I know I was in trouble before I even got in the house. As we climbed the steps, my mother came out hollering at me asking my aunt what I did to make me cry. Nothing Carol, nothing at all. 
he has been a pleasure to have, she forced herself to say he. Well, look at his damn hair, you couldn't get a freaking haircut for him. She grabbed me and bent my head over to look at my hair and saw the hole in my ear. What is this? You pierced his ears? She roughly bent my head over again to see my other ear. This one too? What the hell did you do to him, Mabel? She asked, grabbing my hand and looking at my fingers. What, a manicure too? What the hell is wrong with you, Mabel? He's not a girl, she screamed at mommy. If your brother wasn't in the basement trying to fix the stupid boiler, he would be here giving you hell. This is bullshit, Mabel, and you know it. Trying to make a girl out of my son? How dare you, she said and then started pulling on my hair and hitting me in the head. Stop that, Carol. You'll hurt him, Mommy said. What the hell do you think I want to do, kiss him? She yelled back. Then my father came out, covered in black dust loudly saying, what the hell is going on here? Then looking at me, yelled, what the hell, as my mother told him about my ears and hands. You get inside you little shit, you wait, I beat the shit out of you, as my father went back inside. I was loudly crying and shaking when my aunt tried to pull me back to her hollering no you won't, he did nothing wrong. What are you doing now? Defending him? Yeah, sure, you did this to him. You want the shit, here, you take him, pushing me away. It looks like you ruined him anyway and she pushed me hard into mommy. I'll see you in court Mabel, she said and slammed the door. Yes, you will. Mommy shouted back turning around back to the street. Come Jenny. Let's get back in the car, she shouted back loud enough for my mother to hear the name Jenny. And we stormed away. We quickly got back in the car, Aunt Mabel quickly drove off before they could change their minds and take me back. We only went two blocks and turned when my aunt pulled over to calm herself down. She was shaking, she was so mad. I didn't understand what it all meant and then we heard an explosion so loud it rocked the car and those around us. We both looked up and saw a lot of junk and dust in the air over by my parents' house. My aunt looked at me startled and said, stay here honey. I want to see what just happened, and she parked the car and got out. She quickly walked around the block when I heard sirens getting louder and louder. People walked by the car heading in the same direction as my aunt. Soon lots of people were running past the car and fire engines and police cars appeared. Now I was getting scared again because mommy still hadn't returned. Then saw her walking back to the car. There were still a lot of people around as my aunt got in and drove us away. My aunt didn't say much as we drove back. Just, it will be okay Jenny don't worry. We'll be home soon. It took close to an hour to get home. When I got out of the car I turned and looked at my mommy but before I could open my mouth, she said, knowing my question. Yes sweetie, of course you can go back to being Jenny, with a smile. Hearing that, I ran inside and tore these horrible clothes off as I ran upstairs. I didn't know what was going on but I knew I could be Jenny again and that was all that I wanted. I washed up wearing my nice undies as I heard mommy on the phone with someone. I found a simple dress with front buttons and stepped into it. I put my earrings back in and a bracelet on my arm. I tried to brush my hair as best I could. Next came my white lace socks and black and white shoes. I was so happy to be back. I was playing with my dolls when mommy came back in. I saw her and ran to her crying. Oh mommy, I was so scared. I want to live here mommy, with you, nowhere else. Please mommy can I live here with you forever? I cried. Maybe baby girl, maybe. Our prayers may have been answered, but it will take a while to find out, so you go and play while I make more phone calls. She brushed my hair before she left and said, We'll also polish your nails again later sweetie, she said with a big smile, and she went back downstairs. Two days went by with mommy always on the phone with someone then finally she sat me down the kitchen for an important talk. The made me very nervous. But she put out some cookies and milk for us before she talked and that calmed me down. Sweetie, she started, I have to tell you that you mother and father were killed in a boiler explosion the day we were there. That was the big noise we heard in the car. I went and checked, and the house was totally destroyed. Soon afterward, the house was torn down as it could not be fixed and the land sold and put in a trust. 
Do you understand what I am saying, honey? Yes, mommy, that means I can never go home again and get more spanking, right, mommy? I asked. Yes, sweetie, that is what it means, but now I have to ask you a real important question that is a lot for an eight-year-old to answer, but I must ask you this. I love you very much and I am going to try and adapt you as my own child so you can live here forever, but I need to know, do you want to live with me as a girl or a boy? This is one-time question, baby, and you can never ever change your mind after you made it later on, she said lovingly. Oh, mommy, I don't ever want to be a boy again, no mommy, can I stay a girl from now on, and forever? Are you really sure, sweetie, do you want time to think about it? This will be forever, sweetie, really forever, she asked again. I got off my chair and ran to her crying and saying, I want to be a girl, mommy, please make me a girl forever. Okay, baby, I will do everything I can so you can and truly be Jenny and not just play acting if that is what you truly want, she said. I do, mommy, I really truly do, I said. Okay then, let's paint my daughter's fingernails, she said with a smile. There were more phone calls as the days went by as it seemed the phone never stopped ringing. One day Carolyn stopped by for coffee. I was in my room playing with my dolls when Mommy and Carolyn looked in. Hell Jenny, how are you today? I heard Carolyn say. Good, thank you. Mommy thinks I can stay here from now on. Oh, wouldn't that be nice, she said as I played. My mother looked at her and said, So, what do you think? Is that child is all girl or what? Well, it certainly looks that way. I hope you're right for everyone's sack, Carolyn said and then she and mommy went downstairs to talk more and have their coffee. They went downstairs and her and mommy talked. I went down to get my sewing and heard lots about me and how the court would not take kindly to her changing the sex of a child she just adapted. Then I heard mommy say, I think I know of a way I could avoid that and still end up with my daughter. There was more talk but after Carolyn left mommy made some phone calls and after mommy finished one call, she dug out my old suitcase out of the basement and put it in the backyard. She had an old metal drum that we once used to make a fire and cook marshmallows with and started a fire in it. Seeing this I asked if we were going to cook marshmallows again and she said, oh, something much better baby, open your old case and take out some of your old clothes, she said a smile. I hesitated because I didn't want to touch anything for fear it would do something to me, but I did as I was told. When I had a handful, I looked at her and she said to me with a big smile, now throw them in the fire. I walked over to the fire which was burning good by now and tossed them in. Then mommy said to get more and throw them in which I did and then she told me to throw all the rest in and when I did, mommy threw in the suitcase. We watched it burn when she turned and said to me, you will never ever wear those clothes or any boy clothes ever again honey, as she stirred the burning items. Come inside baby and let's have some ice cream, she said as we walked away from the fire and from my past. Tomorrow we will go see my friend Carolyn and she will do some stuff to you to start making you into a real girl. Would be alright sweetie, she asked. Oh yes mommy, very much so, I replied. We ate our ice cream and mommy said the future is looking bright for both of us. We both smiled and enjoyed the ice cream. The next morning mommy dressed me extra pretty and put on red bow in my hair. When she was done, she said that we were now going to visit her friend again but this time she would do more than just glue me. But instead of going to her house, we went to the clinic where she worked. When we got there, we were taken into a room with a funny bed on it. Mommy had me underdress and took my clothes as I was given a funny dress to wear the only tied in the back. It was too big for me, but mommy friend said it would be fine for now. Then Carolyn said to me, Did mommy tell you what I am doing to you today, Jenny? Yes, she said you were starting to make me a real girl, I said smiling. And you really want to be a real girl forever, Jenny? Oh yes, I do, I really do with all my heart, I told her. Okay honey, lay back and close your eyes, I'm going to put something on your face, and I want you to take some deep breaths. I did and do not remember anything after two breaths. I awoke in another room and in a real bed. How do you feel sweetie mommy asked. Thirsty mommy very thirsty, I said hoarsely and mommy gave me a cup of water with a straw. You are all done for today the doctor said, you can rest, 
and, in a few hours, Mommy will take you home, Carolyn said. I was sleepy and fell back to sleep, but I hear Carolyn telling Mommy that after I give her a shot and you have to see to it that she take Theses pills every day, and that way she will start puberty as a girl instead of a boy. I remember my mommy saying good I went back to sleep. I awoke feeling a sore on my rear, like someone bit me. I remember rubbing it. Mommy and Carolyn came in and saw that and Carolyn held up a needle, I'm afraid I have to give you one shot more before you go home Jenny, holding the needle. I looked up at the needle and I guess looked afraid because Mommy said to me, if you want to be a real girl roll over and let Carolyn give it to you. I rolled over and even opened my gown and I felt something cold on me and then the prick of the needle but this time on the other cheek. As I got up, Carolyn said to me, now honey you may throw up for a little while but that will go away so expect it and Jenny, make sure you take the pills I am giving you each and every day okay? All right, I promise, I replied. Then she said to mommy, bring her back in two weeks and I will remove he bandages. I got dressed but with no panties as I had on a lot of bandages down there instead. We thanked her and drove home. As we drove, I asked mommy what she did to me and she said, remember that little sack you had under you wee wee thing honey, well, you don't have it anymore so now you are more like other girls because girls don't have that and now you don't either, she gently explained. Oh, I'm glad mommy, I want to be like other girls. She just smiled and we drove home singing a silly song. That very evening day a man came and spoke with my mommy. I was asked to come and see the man, but he didn't speak to me. Instead, mommy showed him lots of photographs of me and the other Jenny and then I was told I could leave them and go back to playing. They talked a lot more. I just played with my dolls in the living room as he left. I did need to throw up a few times, but it was like a bellyache, and it did stop after a few days, and I did remember to take my pill each and every day with mommy's help. With everyone I took, I got sick less and less. When I had to pee, there was a little tube hanging from my bandages and I peed out of that. It didn't hurt or anything. As we were told, we were back at Carolyn's clinic to get my bandages removed two weeks later to the day and again I went into the room with the strange bed and again told to lay down. This time there was no mask and Carolyn removed all my bandages and that tube. I think she cleaned me up with that smelly stuff because after I felt her working on me with that glue again. They had me stand up and sit down and asked if I felt any pain. I didn't so I was asked to sit and cross my legs. I was surprised how far my leg now went over the other one. Again, I was asked about pain but there was none and that made Mommy and Carolyn happy. Mommy had went and bought me new panties to wear with lace with lace all around. They were so very soft and pretty, and I told my mother that as I donned them. The reel fit well and I was very smooth in the front. They laughed as I looked and smiled. Mommy smiled at Carolyn and said, Now was I lying when I told you she was all girl inside? Obviously not, Carolyn replied with a smile. A few days later, Mommy said I had to dress up real pretty and even took me to a beauty parlor to get my hair and nails done. That morning I put on my favorite Sunday dress with lace gloves and a hat with a big bow and it wasn't even Sunday. We entered the beauty parlor, and I was taken over to a chair. I felt so special as I sat down in the chair. The lady at the desk said to mommy how pretty I looked and then to me that I would be even pretty when they were done. One lady put a sheet over my shoulders to cover my dress. Mommy told them that she was legally adapting me today as her daughter, and she wanted me to look extra special for court. Two ladies fussed over me for a long time. My hair was cleaned and rolled and set, my nails were cleaned, filed, and painted. They even worked on my face with creams and such. When everyone was done, I looked in the mirror they held up and I even had on some makeup. My cheeks were extra pink, and my lips had a slight color that matched my nails. I ran to mommy and hugged her. Thank you so much mommy, I love the way I look now. You are so very welcome sweetie. You and I are going to have such fun together, you wait and see. But now we need to see the judge, she said as we left the parlor. As we drove mommy said to me, sweetie, I want you to know that your real name from now will be Jennifer Sue Piedmont. I call you Jenny, but the judge will call you Jennifer, understand? Yes mommy, my name is really Jennifer. Jennifer Sue Piedmont. 
Say it, sweetie. In the best voice I had, I responded by saying, My name is Jennifer Sue Piedmont. Good girl, she said as we pulled into the parking lot of the courthouse. Mommy looked me over before going in and then took my hand and we walked. As we entered the very big building a man met us that mommy called our lawyer, and we walked with him into a room with benches to sit on. I sat just like a lady should. We all stood up when a man walked in looking like a minister and then we sat back down. One man got up and read some papers and then our lawyer guy got up and spoke saying how mommy's daughter did not die in the accident and the whole thing was a big mix up and now we are here to fix it, or something like that. Then the first guy got up and said something about an investigation or something and everything checked out or something. I didn't really understand but I heard Jennifer Sue Piedmont being called and mommy brought me up before this judge guy. He told mommy to let me sit in a box next to him so he could see me better and she did. He looked at me over at me and said nicely, and what is your name little girl, he asked me. I proudly replied, Jennifer Sue Piedmont. And who is your mommy? He asked. I turned and pointed to mommy. He then said, and do you love your mommy, Jennifer? Oh yes, I replied and ran over to her. He then said he was satisfied to someone and told someone else to let the record show that Jennifer Sue Piedmont is alive and well and standing before the court and that James Thomas Wager is deceased instead. He then asked that I be fingerprinted for the record, but when they did, I didn't see any records anywhere, but they did talk about them. My mommy thanked the judge guy and the lawyer guy. We walked out and mommy was beaming with a smile from ear to ear. We walked quietly to the car and right before she opened the door, she grabbed me and hugged me crying and said, Do you understand what just happened, sweetie? No, mommy, did I do good? Oh, sweetie, you did great. She hugged me even harder saying, Oh yes, you did because you are now, really and truly my girl, my daughter, now and forever. Your name is really Jennifer now, and best of all I am your real mommy from now on and no more secrets or make-believe ever again. I lit up when I realized that I never ever have to leave mommy never ever again. I am so happy I could bust mom, I said and we both cried as we got in the car and drove away, but we didn't drive home, instead we went to the mall and to a jewelry store where mom said to me, I have a surprise for my new daughter. And took me inside the store asked the man if it was done. He said yes and walked away to get something. This is a special present from me mom to you today, sweetie. I think you will really like it, she said when the man came back and handed mommy a box, she opened it and took something out and as she bent over a little to show me. It was a gold necklace with the word Jennifer on it in big letters. Do you like it honey? Oh, mommy I love it. And she then placed it around my neck to wear. I love my girl, my Jennifer, she said kissing my forehead. And I love my mom and gave her a big hug. Mom hugged me back and said, now come, we are having lunch with Carolyn and show her your present and to celebrate today, she said. We then walked to the restaurant in the mall where we found Carolyn. Oh my, how pretty you look Jennifer and is that a new necklace? I sat down gave her a big smile and said, yes, it is, mommy got it for me today. It is very nice Jennifer. It looks so pretty on you, and I love your hat and gloves, she said as I took them off. Then she turned to mommy and said, congratulations, I heard it went really well in court today. Yes, yes it did, mommy said. I got what I wanted, to get my daughter back and she got what she wanted, to really be a real girl. That was pretty sneaky, the way you did it, but I get it, you got the same end results without another ton of paperwork. I will admit, she sure looks happy. Speaking of that, once she shows signs of developing, we'll get the visit started and the surgery started to finish it all up, said Carolyn. To make me a real girl mommy? I asked a bit confused. Yes honey, to make you complete, she answered. But let's celebrate today and have lunch shall we ladies? Mom asked smiling. We ordered our lunch and while we were waiting for our food to come Carolyn asked, Are you still getting a little sick at times Jennifer? Carolyn asked me. No, not anymore. That stopped a few days ago, I said. Good I'm glad to hear as it shows a sign of acceptance in your body. And are you taking your pills every day honey? She asked. Oh yes, mom set it up, 
so I take it after breakfast every morning. I call it my girl pill, I said with a big smile. You are well on your way Jennifer, Carolyn said with a smile. After lunch mom ordered an ice cream sundra for us. I never had one and it tasted really good. That evening mom baked a cake for us to celebrate after dinner. Carolyn came over to join us. I invited Gina but she only knew that I was adapted today, not the being a girl stuff. Mom seemed so happy that I would never leave her again, and I was really happy about that because it meant no more spankings and no more terrible clothes to wear ever again. The very next day mom drove us to a school and told me I would be starting here soon. We walked in together and armed with some papers, mom registered me to start school here in the fifth grade. When we walked back to the car, I asked if I would go as a boy or a girl and mommy stopped me before we got into the car, looked at me and said, Jennifer sweetie, you are a real girl now, you will never be a boy again. There is no going back and besides, didn't we burn all those horrible clothes the other day? Oh yes, we did, I forgot, I said laughing. So, life went on for me. I entered the school as Jennifer Sue Piedmont and made lots of friends. I later moved on to middle class and I joined the chess club and the sewing club. Mom had told the school that I would be needing some surgeries for some female problems, but all would be good in the end. Mom helped me each day with my homework and helped me study. Once my chest started developing, we paid a visit to Carolyn, she set up some regular visits for some shots as my chest grew and my hips grew even more. Finally, the day came, and she set a date with the doctor for me to enter the hospital for some surgery. While being in the hospital was hard on my schooling, my teachers made sure I got all the study materials, homework and even the tests I needed. During my hospital stays, mom would visit me every day and help me study and even gave me some tests. Sometimes Carolyn would stop in to visit or to check up on me. Mom and I grew really close though all this and she always was a great supporter. She was wonderful during the hard times and especially with my pain. I was implanted with a device that gave off hormones on a regular basis so there were no need for any more shots and mom really helped me a lot while I was in the hospital, walking me around and giving me pep talks and always made sure I was up on all my studies, and thanks to her, I graduated with a B+, which was the best grade I ever got. After three surgeries during middle school, I entered high school with a full female anatomy and mom was right, I was never a boy again and by the time I graduated high school, I didn't have much of a memory of life before mom. More importantly, I was happy, very happy.